Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Pompberry, and today I'm taking it back to the basics and I'm gonna be teaching you how to do a tattoo cover up. Now I know this is kind of different from what I usually do here on the channel. It's not gonna be a look or anything, but I have done other SFX basics here on the channel before, like how to cover up your brows and how to create mouth safe blood. So I thought this would be another interesting thing to show you guys. And I'm super happy to say that today's video is sponsored by Narrative Cosmetics. So I'm gonna be using their products today to cover up the little tattoo that I have on my thigh. So I'm gonna jump straight in, but before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about tattoo cover-ups is a little bit of color theory. So much like when you're covering up brows, you're trying to neutralize the color of what you're trying to cover up. Usually when covering up tattoos, the biggest issue to cover is black ink. And if you've ever seen a tattoo that isn't super, super fresh, you'll notice that the ink isn't 100% black. It usually goes a little bit blue or green. And so if we apply a little bit of color theory, you'll see here on this wheel that the opposite to blue is orange and the opposite to green is red. So if the ink is in this family here, the color that's gonna neutralize it is in this family right here because they're opposites. So when you're trying to cover up a tattoo, you could just try to put some heavy concealer on it and call it a day, but that's not going to cover it up completely. You need to neutralize that color first to then conceal. It's the same thing with like under eyes. If you have a lot of issues covering up your under eye circles, that might mean that you need a color corrector first before your concealer. Now, in what situation would you need to do a tattoo cover up? If you're not a makeup artist and you're just, you know, a makeup enthusiast, maybe you have a big event coming up that you don't want your tattoo showing for some reason. Maybe it's something you regret getting. So this is always handy to know how to do. If you are a makeup artist, chances are you're going to have to do this pretty often. A lot of actors, a lot of models have tattoos that need covering up for certain projects. Projects. Oftentimes we have to erase a pre-existing tattoo on an actor to then just cover it up with a new tattoo that's specific for that role that they're playing. So there's kind of like a million and one ways that you can do a tattoo cover up, but the basics is you need two layers of color. One is your neutralizing, your color correcting layer, and then the other one is the flesh tone layer. So no matter what products you're using, that's just the general rule. Today I'm gonna be using alcohol activated makeup and this is what I use on set whenever I need to do a tattoo cover-up. This is my preferred method of covering up tattoos. And Narrative sent me all of their alcohol activated palettes. I won't be using them all today, but I did want to show them to you guys. Narrative is a fairly new company and all their products are SFX focused. They only sent me the alcohol palettes, but I'm actually dying to try out their other products. They have some cream colors that set once they're on the skin and then they become transfer proof, which is kind of crazy and they're coming out with a clown white that's in that formula so I'm just like I want to try out that clown white so bad. <laughs> Some of you even tagged me and messaged me on Instagram to show me their clown white that they're about to launch and I am so excited. But anyway, this video is not about that. Today, we're gonna just be focusing on the alcohol activated paints. Now, if you've never heard of alcohol paints, they're pretty standard in the film industry. The best way that I can describe it is if you're familiar with using watercolor paints, they're basically like that. If you touch them, nothing's gonna happen. This is just like a solid brick of paint. With watercolors, you activate them with water. With alcohol activated paints, obviously you activate them with alcohol. But it's the same concept as using Using watercolors they go on pretty sheer because that's what you want you want thin layers of paint so that you can get really subtle and really realistic effects. This is how people create bruises and injuries in films. It's all using alcohol palettes. The main reason people use these is that they're completely transfer proof once they're dry. The only thing that can activate them is alcohol, so they're completely waterproof. Water is not going to affect them at all. The only thing that will affect them like any other makeup product is oil. So oil will start to break it down. But other than that, it is very much transfer proof. And I'm super excited to use these because they seem really, really good. I've been playing around with them a little bit. So before I start covering up my tattoo, I just wanted to show you the four palettes they sent me. You can either get just the palette or buy a palette kit. And inside you'll find everything you need to get started. You'll find a bottle of activator, a bottle of remover, and two spray caps in case you 
you want to use them as sprays and not as dropper bottles. And of course, you'll find the palette as well. As you can see, the palette has the names of each color on the front and it's got a clear lid, which you can use as a mixing palette as well. I like that the names are on the front because then you won't get them dirty with paint when you're trying to mix or even inside the palette. You can get drips and things. So I'm glad that the names are outside so that they don't get dirty that way. Another thing I love about these palettes is that you can remove the pans so you can rearrange them however you want. But also this makes me think that they're going to launch pan refills in the future and I'm really, really hoping that they do because that's something that's sorely missing in other brands. In other alcohol activated palettes, the pans are fixed into the palette. So if you run out of a color, you basically have to buy a whole other palette to replace it. Or you have to manually refill it with the liquid version of the alcohol color and let it evaporate until you can refill the pan. It's such, such, such a hassle. So I'm very thankful that Narrative created a design where you can just pop out the little pan and replace it. First up, we've got the flesh tone palette and this one as you can see it's not necessarily what you would think of a flesh tone palette these aren't like foundation colors these are actually adjusters and then colors you would use to break up certain paint jobs this is for doing stuff like freckling and age spots and things like that or just breaking up certain patterns in a paint job so this palette really comes in handy when you need to adjust something or try to make it match someone a little bit better then next up we've got the effects palette and in the effects palette you get your primary colors, you get white, you get black, and then you also get bruise and blood colors. So this one is incredibly handy to have in your kit because you can basically mix whatever color you want with this palette. That's another thing with alcohol palettes. I love using them because you have so much freedom. The whole point is for you to mix your own color. So they're extremely customizable. You can adapt the color for any situation and any skin tone. Then next up, we've got a zombie palette. Now this palette also has some prime colors some adjusters, a uh, blood color, bruise color, but then it's also got a zombie gray color in here and it's got a light flesh that you can mix into any of the other colors to make a really like sickly pale looking zombie and it's got a dark brown and a black so you can darken any color that you need or create dirt effects with this as well. And then last but not least is the complexion palette and this I think is my favorite. This is maybe the handiest one to have on set with you. I find that I use these types of colors really often because these are basically all adjusters but then you also have like some blood red in here and then there's eggplant which I can use for bruising. Vein tone is always always handy to have on hand. So this palette it might not look like it but it comes in handy very very often and I will be using it today. So I'm actually going to show you two methods of covering up a tattoo using alcohol paints. One method I'll just be using alcohol paints. The other one I'm going to sandwich some concealer in between two layers of alcohol paints just to give you a little bit of variety and you can see what works better for you. So I'm gonna grab my little activator bottle and you can use 99% alcohol to activate them instead. It says here on the back, to activate, apply one to three drops of 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol directly into the palette cell. Allow 99% alcohol to soak into the color for several seconds for a more opaque application. Colors can be applied with a brush or sponge. Do not use 70% alcohol, MEK, acetone, water, or any other solvent or liquid. They won't work just plain and simple will not work. The activator that comes with it isn't pure alcohol. There's other ingredients in here as well. And that's because it gives you a little bit more working time. 99% alcohol flashes off very, very quickly. So if you want a little bit more working time, I would highly recommend using the activator that comes with it. And as you can see, it comes either in a dropper bottle or they also give you the spray caps if you wanna switch it out. Before I start covering up my tattoo, I just wanted to show you the texture of this product before we get started so you understand understand how I'm going to work with it. So I'm gonna grab the complexion palette and I'm gonna grab the color coral, which is the one I'm gonna be using to neutralize my tattoo. And I'm just gonna drop a couple drops of activator in here. And then I'm going to switch it around on my brush. And then I'm just gonna apply some on the back of my hand for you to see. You can see that it is very, very liquidy and very translucent. And the more activator you put, the more translucent it's gonna be. It dries off super quickly and then it becomes instantly transfer proof. Like I could do this all day, it would not come off. And as I said, it's waterproof. Here's some water, ah, going up my sleeve. So I got water on here, rubbing it around, doesn't do anything. I could do this all day, would not do anything. That's why alcohol paints are magic. <laughs> 
But say you're applying this on someone and you accidentally applied a little too much on, you can always take some more alcohol. This is actually plain alcohol. I'm just going to spritz it on here. And then you can take your brush again and then you can see that you can move it again. It's suddenly reactivated and you can move it around. And that's the beauty of this product. You can go super, super thin, just have the lightest wash in the world. For doing something like a sunburn effect, this is what you would use. You would go in with a light wash and you can move it around with your fingers, you can move it around with a brush, but you can see you can get just a very delicate wash or you can use it super concentrated. I'm gonna go back and grab some more and this time I barely diluted it. You can see just how opaque that is. So you can go pretty opaque with these colors, but usually you want to use washes of colors because since it has this translucency, it looks real. It looks like it's a part of the skin. Now for tattoo cover-ups, that's not the case. That's not what we want to do. We want to use something like this that's super, super concentrated because we want to cancel out that black color. And it doesn't matter if the tattoo is all black and gray or if it's a colored tattoo, you always want to neutralize it to a ready, corally color because that's what sits under the skin. You have to think that under the skin, we have blood. And so it's easier to conceal when it's red-ish than any other color. So it's important to do on the entire tattoo. It doesn't matter what color the tattoo is, you always want to neutralize it to a corally ready orange. Some people use orange, some people use red, some people use coral. I prefer using coral. It's kind of a preference. It depends on how you work. And it's also a matter of knowing what products you're using. Familiarizing yourself with them is super important. Okay, now that's dry and I can do this all day and it's not going anywhere. It's there, it's stuck. <laughs> you might be asking yourself if it doesn't rub off and if you don't want to use a ton of alcohol directly on your skin, how do you remove it then? Thankfully, they come with a remover, but if you're out of this, you can always use isopropyl Meristate. It removes prosthetic adhesives. It basically removes anything that you need it to and it's really gentle on the skin. Okay, so now that you know what alcohol colors are, you know how they behave, we can start covering up my tattoo. This is my little Cheshire Cat tattoo on my thigh and today we're gonna cover them up. We're gonna make them disappear, which I think is very fitting for the Cheshire cat. So as I said, I'm going to start off with the coral color from the complexion palette and this color I'm going to want to lay it on pretty thick. So I've added a couple drops of the activator and now I'm just going to swish that around with my brush really working the activator in until I can tell that it's got a kind of thick consistency coating my brush and I can go in and start covering up the tattoo. And you don't have to be super precise with this step, you just have to make sure to cover up the whole tattoo. And I'm just activating it little by little as I need some more product. I don't like wasting my activator too much, so I just activate as I go. And wherever it's a little bit thin, you can always go back and do a kind of second layer to make sure that the black is really covered up, like in these spots right here. And you don't have to worry about like blending the edges of this layer or anything. You really just want to get it on pretty quick and rough. And this is fine, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna let it dry so I can move on to my next step. Now the layer is dry, you can see here I am really rubbing it, nothing's happening. And I don't know if you can tell, but I did go pretty thick with the paint and it has gotten a little bit shiny, but also if you layer alcohol colors too thin, Thick, it can start to get wrinkly, especially if it's somewhere that has mobility. Here it's on my thigh, it doesn't matter. This isn't going to move. But if this was on like a shoulder, for example, you would see a little bit of wrinkling, but that's normal with every alcohol paint. That's just the way they are. So be mindful to not layer it up too thick. Now I'm gonna grab the Flesh Tone palette and I'm gonna try to match myself. I might have to mix a few colors. I'm gonna try light flesh first, although I think it's a little too light for me and also maybe be a little too yellow. I might have to neutralize it a little bit, but that's just part of the fun. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of the flesh tone and just do it like here on the side. You can probably tell this is pretty light for me. It's not a perfect match, but we can definitely start from here and then use other colors to adjust it. I might actually mix these two colors, just adding a little bit of this one with this one, and I'm going to mix them on to the lid. So I'm gonna use the lid as my palette. There's various ways you can do this. The risk of apply it right on top is see here, it's transferring onto my brush and it's mixing the colors together. That's because the alcohol will reactivate it. So in order to do this, you would have to have a lot of product on your brush and you'd have to like stamp it on, hoping that they don't mix together. But as you can see, it is 
mixing. So the ideal way to do it is to spatter the color on. And the way you do that is by really, really saturating your brush with product and then flicking it on. And you can do this until the tattoo is covered. Now it takes a bit of time. If you're rushed for time, another effective way to do it is really dilute these colors with a ton of activator and then pour them into an airbrush gun. And that way you can airbrush the second layer on and you won't get any transfer and it'll look gorgeous. But as they say, spattering is the poor man's airbrush. So if you don't have an airbrush, you can just do this with your brush. Whoop. Careful not to get really big spatters, but you can already see it's starting to fade away. So I'm just gonna go and stamp some on. Now that I've got a little bit of spatter on there, it kind of serves as like a shield between the layers. I'm gonna spatter some more. This also might not be the ideal brush for spattering. Typically you would use a chip brush for this. Let me actually switch to one so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'll just do a few more stamps since I've got product on this brush. Okay, so this is a chip brush. You can get them for really, really cheap. They're like less than a dollar. And I'm going to trim it diagonally like so, about in half. Okay, so it's trimmed and I also got myself a tongue depressor or a popsicle stick so that I can do this instead of using my finger to spatter the paint. I don't have to get my finger dirty. I can just do this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and saturate the brush with this kind of a little bit darker color. And it has to be pretty liquidy on the brush, otherwise it will not spatter. So you can get some more activator on there and really kind of liquefy this paint. And then take your popsicle stick and start spattering. Ah, and I got a drip right there. <laughs> gotta be careful. See how that covered up the area a lot faster. But as you can see, this color doesn't match me perfectly. So I'm gonna do some spattering around it, but I'm also going to adjust it. So I'm gonna grab some more of the light color and continue spattering. You can see with the right brush, you can cover a much bigger area. I'm just waiting for this to dry, but you can see that my leg isn't just one color. You can see that there's like a little freckle. You can see that there's little veins running through. So you see a little bit of like this red modeling happening. And so I wanna try to add some texture on top of this. So it isn't so glaring that we're trying to cover something up. So I'm gonna take the complexion palette and I'm gonna take the tiniest bit of light mauve. I think that'll match what I'm trying to achieve pretty well. And I don't wanna get like huge drips from it. I just want like little tiny specks. So I'm gonna coat my brush with this. I don't wanna go too liquid with it. And I want to spatter it from pretty far away just to break this up a little bit. I'm being pretty delicate with this. I don't wanna cover it in pink but I just want to break this apart a little bit. And you can see it's pretty shiny, so we're gonna have to take care of that with a translucent powder. That will also help to camouflage it a bit. I'm also gonna take a little bit of the warm tone from the flesh tone palette, and I'm going to spatter a little bit of that on as well. Again, just to break things up a little bit. Not a ton, just a little. And by spattering these other colors on top, you can start adjusting the cover-up and make it camouflage a little bit better. Camouflaging and doing tattoo cover-ups does take quite a bit of practice, but it's a really handy skill to have. Grabbing some more of the light mauve, breaking things up a little bit. You can also do it on the skin around the cover-up. Going ahead and I'm adding a little bit of a yellow tone. I'm using the soft yellow. It's always nice to mix colors a little bit. Then going back with the first color just to soften everything a little bit. Now you can see that there's some strong spattering around it as well and I don't necessarily want that so I'm just going to take a fluffy brush and just spray a little bit of alcohol on it. Don't want it super wet but you can go in and you can buff whatever you don't want out a little bit. You can soften everything. I know I said I wasn't going to use the zombie palette but I actually will be dipping into the dark brown in the zombie palette. For more realism you can go in and hand draw little freckles like the one I've got here. I can emulate it on top of the tattoo cover-up and that kind of also helps to trick the eye a little bit. I'm gonna do one like right here. If it's too harsh you can soften it up a little bit. You can do more than one if you're feeling adventurous. Let's 
do another one over here. Now I need to mattify this. So I'm going in first with some translucent powder. This is just regular translucent powder. I just have it in a little spray bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spray that on there and make sure that everything is really well mattified. And you can see that already helps so much in concealing where you covered up your tattoo. You can also, for a little bit of added coverage, you can go in with a powder that has some color to it, like a pressed powder, you can go in and then powder certain areas that you want just a tiny bit more coverage or where you want to kind of like mellow things out a little bit. You can use that to help out a little. I'm just going to clean up a few little spots that I just noticed. And this is the cover up finished. You can see I am rubbing it and nothing's happening. I can drip water on it. Nothing's gonna happen there. <laughs> it's only gonna get my leg wet. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but you can see it is on there really, really well. And the one thing that tattoo cover-ups won't cover, doesn't matter what kind of tattoo cover-up you do, is it won't cover up texture. So if the tattoo is a little bumpy, if it's a little bit raised, that unfortunately, there's no way of covering it up. It's like trying to cover up a pimple. You can only cover up the color, you can't cover up the texture. But all in all, you can see I've covered up the tattoo pretty well, and this isn't going anywhere. Unless, obviously, I take some remover. The best way to remove it, you can see I'm kind of scrubbing, but if you don't want to scrub the skin, you just get a cotton pad or a wipe wet with some remover and then leave it on there for like 30 seconds and then removing it will be so much easier. Now for the second method of tattoo cover up, I'm going to start the exact same way that I started the first one. I'm going in with the coral color from the complexion palette and this is going to be my color correcting layer. Now that this layer is fully dry and fully transfer proof, you're gonna get some full coverage concealer. Now, preferably one that has a matte finish, so it's as transfer proof as possible. I'm gonna try this color on this side. As you can see, this method is a little bit easier because you won't reactivate the layer that's underneath, but the disadvantage to this method is that the concealer can transfer. Let me try a different one, see if the color matches a little bit better. So you can only use this method if you know nothing will be touching it or rubbing up against it. Otherwise, I would not recommend this method. But I just figured I'd show it because it is a possible way to do it and it's always nice to have options. It's always nice to know multiple ways to achieve something because sometimes you're caught in a pinch and this is all the time you have for. The other method of splattering is a little more time consuming. This you can see, you can just like bang it on and you're pretty much good to go. It depends how high coverage your concealer is if you can build it up you can see there's still a little bit peeking through but that's why I'm gonna go in with another layer of the alcohol colors to just help blend this in a little bit more now instead of a concealer you could use a cream that's more transfer proof that would be a better option but you can see this doesn't cover it up completely you could powder this and then go in with another layer of concealer that would definitely help now I'm just quickly going to powder it to try to set it as best I can, I'm just going in with the translucent powder again, doing a quick layer. And then I'm also going in with a little bit of the pressed powder to set it in place. And you can see that it's pretty much gone thanks to the color correction that I did, but it could still be a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more color using the alcohol paints. I'm gonna do a little bit more spattering using these two colors right here. I'm gonna do it pretty lightly since we already have the coverage I don't have to go crazy. I want this layer to be a little more translucent. I also want to break up the concealer a little bit since it's really heavy. I just want to break the skin up a little bit. I'm gonna dab wherever it seems a little too harsh. It's already looking better. This will make it go a little bit faster. You won't have to do as much spattering since you have that base layer of concealer on there. Just going around the tattoo because it's important to do around that area as well so that you can really camouflage it in well. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Then again, taking the complexion palette, I'm gonna take the light mauve color and I'm gonna spatter some of that on because the concealer I used is a little too yellow so I just wanna add a little bit of pink in here. 
That's already starting to look a lot better. I think I'm gonna try adding a little bit of deep blush, just a tiny bit, just to experiment. Why not? It's very, very diluted. Also, I can still see some of the yellow from the concealer, so I'm actually going to go in with the cool tone, which is this blue right here, ever so slightly. And this is what this type of adjuster is for. So, okay, that was a little too much. But if you do it from really far away, that'll just cool it down a little bit. If it's reading too warm, too yellow, you just need the lightest, lightest layer. And you can see that already helps a lot toning down the yellow. And all you gotta do is look around where you're covering. And I can see that there's some blue in my leg. I can see that there's some purple, all these little veins. There's a little bit of purple running through. So you wanna try to replicate that in the area that you're covering. I think I might go with a tiny bit, tiny bit of purple. I'm going to take the FX palette and I'm going to dip into the purple right here. This one seems like it's very warm tone though. I might cool it down with the cool tone. So I'm going to grab a little bit of purple and then grab a little bit of the cool tone, just very, very lightly from far away. Oh yeah, I quite like that. That breaks it up a little bit. It kind of looks like the veining that I've got going on. Probably should have done this in my first cover up as well. Yeah, I actually like the speckling that I've got going on a lot more. We've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, and it looks a lot more like the leg around it. It's still very shiny though. I'm about to neutralize that with some powder. I just gotta wait for this to dry. I'm just really quickly going to take my brown to do the little freckles. Do another one all the way over here. Another one over here. Making them a little bit bigger. Look at that, the cute little freckles. Now it's time to get rid of the shine with some translucent powder. I'm just going to go ahead and spray some of that on. And there you have it. Again, you can only see where the tattoo is because there's texture there, but otherwise you would not be able to see it. If I change the lighting a little bit, it can help. There you go, there you have it. And this type of cover up isn't as transfer proof, but it's still pretty good. You can still touch it a little bit because it's got that layer of alcohol on top, but I wouldn't risk rubbing it too hard because that concealer is bound to budge at some point. Even though doing this method might cause transferring, one reason to do it would be if you're doing it in an area with high mobility, like the shoulder, and you don't want the alcohol paints to wrinkle. In that case, you might not do the top layer of alcohol paints or just do a very, very light layer on top of the concealer. But each method of tattoo cover-up has its own applications, its own advantages and disadvantages. I'm gonna use the pressed powder a little bit just because it's really mattifying and that will really help with the texture as well. When you mattify texture, Texture, it helps to hide it. So now you can see it's a little more well hidden. And there you have it. And again, to remove it, instead of just scrubbing it vigorously, I would recommend applying the remover and holding it on there for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then that first layer is harder to come off because it is much thicker, but don't scrub your skin off. All you gotta do is just wait for the remover to do its thing. You just gotta press down and then gently wipe it off. And there you have it. And that's how you cover up tattoos. Thanks again to Narrative Cosmetics for sponsoring this video. I cannot wait to try their other products and I hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.